When it comes to web application development, uh, Node.js has a very powerful companion that is called uh, Express.js. Express.js is a web application framework, and uh, as we can see from the website, it provides a robust set of features for web and mobile applications. In this lecture, we're going to play a little with Express.js. We're going to install it on our project, the one that you have created in the previous lectures. If you haven't seen the NPM lecture, feel free to check the playlist or look on our YouTube channel for uh, Node.js for Beginners lectures. So what we're going to do is uh, go back to our project that I've already opened. It's in here. I'm going to zoom that a little so our mobile viewers might be able to see the code as well and what I'm going to do. So if I type ls, I'm inside the project folder. There is lesson 5 and there was lesson 3 previously. So type ls and as you can see we still have our node modules, package log JSON, package JSON and service JS. If we look at the service JS file with a more command, we don't need to open that. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. VI. So on VI, as you can see, we, are, we still have the same code that we were using previously. We're going to rewrite this code uh, from scratch. So you, you can also get rid of the file and I'm going to do the same. And it's gone. Before we start writing the new service.js file, let me create it once more, service.js, I'll create the screen, we can install express. So we do npm install express. If you are on npm 5, you don't need to write anything else, otherwise you can type dash dash save, and as you will remember, it will be saved in your production dependency. Otherwise, you'll do dash D, capital D, and it will be saved in your development dependencies. Let's install it. And once Express has been installed, we can open our preferred editor. I'm using VS Code. Let me put that somewhere here. Okay. And I'm gonna close this and open the project folder which is called not beginner lesson 5 and that's it let's close that and let's open the server js file so uh, maybe i zoom too much so what we want to do now is to start writing our server application the first thing we're gonna do is actually uh, define a constant that we're gonna call express and this constant will just be the require you see what require does, yeah? Require express. Const uh, is uh, available since ES6, and uh, we're finally able to enforce constants. But if you are not using ES6, it's the same thing as writing var. The difference is that if I write that as a constant, it cannot change. And we're not going to change the module itself, right? Because when we write require express, the code will look into the node modules folder. It will look for node. Uh, uh, sorry, we will look for express here and basically return whatever is defined in the index.js file, okay? Or in the main in the, in the main uh, property inside the package.json file. We don't care about what happens under the, under the hood for this specific tutorial, so let's continue. Express expose a, a method that is very useful that is called uh, express fantasy and so we're going to use the method to create our first app and the way we do that is we declare a constant we type it const app equals express we open and close brackets and that's it so now we have a reference for the for the application to the application so our app object will have many methods that will be very useful for us Next thing we have to do is actually to listen like we did previously. So we listen to the on a port for request. So we're going to do app.listen3000. All right, we did that in the NPM lecture and also in another lecture when I showed you the example. The listen method accepts also a callback. All right, and the callback works as follow. We can do like function, right? As you can see, IntelliSense is already suggesting what we can do. You see that it's a function, and the callback function works like this. So we can do like a console log, maybe console.log. 
Dia is running. All right, so let me save this and go back to the code. So back in my shell, I can now do node server JS. Let's see if everything is working and it is. You see the console log message here? So let's stop it. Our application in the current status is not very useful, you know, because we want to be able to solve uh, different files and have an index HTML the, with a template that people can see, you know. So uh, before we can continue, we have to create a public folder. So I'll type public. And inside the public folder here, I'm gonna create another file and I call it, guess what, index.html. And here I can create a document, an HTML document, typical one, and that's it. And we want our web application to return the index HTML whenever somebody visits their localhost 3000 URL. In order to do so, we're gonna uh, create a specific thing that is called the middleware. And an express middleware is a function that has access to the request object and the, re and the response object. Uh, and imagine that like a layer, and we can have multiple layers on top of each other, and each layer is responsible to uh, do something with either the request or the response, transform it, manage that, and validate it. And then when it finishes doing its job, it calls an, a callback that is named next and passes everything to the next middleware until we reach the very base middleware, the typical, uh, the one that will actually return the response to the caller. There's a there's an application-wide middleware that we can use in Express to deal with static resources, and this one is called express.static, and it takes as a parameter the path, the folder containing the static resources, in our case it's public. And in order to create it, we're using app, that is our express application, dot use. And as you can see, the only parameter is the entire comma, the express dot static public. All right, so once I save it, I will restart my server. And we're gonna do a small test. I'm gonna go on my browser and type localhost 3000 and see what happens. And as you can see, it's returning an actual application. It's empty here, but if I look at the source, it's exactly my index.html file. So that's good, no? And uh, let's close that. And let's continue working on our app. Now we want to do something better. I'm not gonna go into details, but we can do something that is called a server-side rendering hub. So basically we want to have a template on our uh, server that includes uh, expressions, variables, you know, if you ever work with AngularJS or something like that, you might be aware of it. And we want to use a thing that is called a template engine. And uh, when we use this template engine, we can uh, then use a method that is called render that will compile our uh, views and return the static version of those views to the client. Okay, let's take that step by step. We're gonna install a template engine that is called pug. And to do so, or you know that already, we can do npm install pug. And while this is installing, I will create another folder in my project. I will call it views. And inside this view, I'm gonna create a file that is called index.pug, pug, all right? And here, I'm, I'm gonna just copy a template, bear with me, no worries. So this is the template. It recalls, it reminds of an HTML template because it, in fact, it gets converted into a typical HTML template. So this is the HTML, and then we have the head just underneath. Let me move this a little. And then we have the body at the same level of head here. And no worries about the other symbols, I'm gonna tell you in a second. Okay, so we have our HTML, our head, and then we have our title tag. And the symbol here means that basically the title tag will be populated with the result of an expression that is gonna be title. So basically we are gonna have a variable containing this title value, that can be whatever. And at the same way, in the same way, we're gonna have another variable that contains the message that we want to attach to the H1 tag. 
So let's save this file and let's go back to the server.js app. We can check in the meantime if we finish installing POG. We did that. So we're ready to use it. And the way we can enable a template engine is by typing the following command. We we'll type app.set, open brackets, and then we type, we'll have a force parameter that is a string, that is a view engine. Then we have a second parameter that is the name of the engine we want to use, this pug. All right, that's it. So we can save it, and we're almost there. Now we want to be able to do a get request. So we want to have a new page in our application, a new URL that we can visit. And the URL we want to visit is slash greetings, all right? And every time we use get, we have the first parameters that is the URL we are requesting. And the second parameter is the actual function and implements whatever we want to do. And this function takes as an input request and response. Those two objects that will contain, for example, our parameters, if we have a parameter in the URL and other informations that come from the client. Yeah. Inside our, uh, our function body, we're going to just do one thing. We're going to type res, response, that's all. We are doing something with the response, dot render. And the render method will compile the view with the data we provide. So wait for it. Let's not render. The view we want to compile is named index, right? Index.pug. And the second parameter of the render function are actually the params that I mentioned before. So we're going to have a title, right? And the title is going to be Welcome to Monkey Island. And the second parameter is the message for the H1. And it's going to be look, a tree headed monkey, monkey maybe, yeah? So if I've done everything right, I can save and restart my server that is already down, so that's fine, no server. Let's go back to the demo here on Chrome and we do localhost 3000 slash greetings, right? Cannot get greetings, wait, 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 I might have done something wrong. The app is running. Maybe it typed greetings wrong. Let me check the code. Ah, yeah, it's, you see, it's only, there's an S missing. Uh, sorry, guys. Let's try again. I have to restart the server, maybe. <laughs> Here we go. And then, the and as you can see, it's saying, look, a three-headed monkey. That's good, no? And let's see the HTML. We almost finished, guys. So inside our title, we have the four string. That was the title parameter. And then in the H1, we have the message. That was, look, a three-headed monkey, the message parameter. Last thing before we leave you. We can have a parameter in our URL. So let's say that we want to have a name parameter, right? Or maybe the, the title parameter. And instead of saying welcome to Monkey Island, we're gonna do welcome and the name. And I'm gonna use an ES6 feature, but if you are on ES5, you can do just plus, right? Title. And our title is gonna be something like that. It's a bar title equals request dot params because we have a param object that contains the parameters dot title that is the parameter name that we have here and the message is going to be welcome plus title this is the es5 version or it's going, we are going to use a, a template a string template with a back tick and do welcome and then we're going to open square brackets dollar sorry no the dollar is outside welcome Title, yeah, and that's it. In this way, this string template is gonna be compiled with the title that comes from the parameter. I save and restart the server. Every time you do a change of this type, you have to restart the server. And let's see what happens if I go on localhost. Sorry, greetings, Alex. 
You see the title up here, it be became Welcome Alex, and if I put another name, like Viewer, Welcome Viewer. And it's gonna work in the same way for the H1. So, you learned quite a few things in this tutorial. If you have any question, feel free to leave a comment. If you like the, the lecture, please uh, let us know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, follow our Facebook page, and let us know what would you like to see next.